Superman is easily the most iconic superhero of all time, and his look has evolved a lot over the years. So let's break down the evolution of Superman's suit. What's up, my comic comrades? Today we talk about the evolution of Superman's suit. It's come a long way since his first one in Action Comics 1, all those decades ago. There's been slight changes all the way to drastic changes, and we're gonna talk about the most significant ones. So sit back as we take a look at how the Man of Steel spandex has evolved over the years. All right, so obviously it all started in Action Comics 1 back in 1938, meaning this is the basis for everything to come with Superman's suit over the next several decades. So his red cape, blue bodysuit, yellow belt, red trunks, and S-shield were all implemented in the very first outing of suits. Even his red boots, although the funny thing about the red boots is that we only see them on the cover of Action Comics 1, not the interiors. In the interior of the issue, his boots are blue, matching his bodysuit. His boots would stay blue until Action Comics issue 6, when artist and co-creator of Superman Joe Shuster finally decided to give him red boots, as we saw on the cover of Action Comics 1. A funny thing that happened in Action Comics 7 is Superman had yellow boots, but that was due to a color error during printing. Superman's S-Shield that we would learn many years later that doesn't stand for Superman, but Hope, would also gradually change throughout Superman's first several issues of Action Comics. You could see it was way simpler, almost looking like a gold police shield badge with an S in it. Actually, the gold police-like shield only lasted for the first issue of Action Comics, because in the second issue, it was basically an upside-down triangle. And on the first panel of Action Comics 2, Schuster forgot to put Superman's S shield on the chest altogether, which is hilarious. By the time 1939 rolled around, Superman was given his first solo series with him front and center on the cover, giving us pretty much the suit he still wears to this day, for the most part. Although the S shield as you can see, still didn't reach its final form, so to speak. Its final form, as we know it now, wouldn't really stick until issue 14 of Superman. We did see glimpses of this shield starting in issue 6, with it varying in design until issue 14 of Superman. So the classic Superman costume that is still used to this day, with little variations depending on the artist, first appeared in Superman 14. We're talking about the red cape with yellow shield on it, blue bodysuit, red trunks and boots, and of course his iconic S shield the way we all know it now. By the time 1941 rolled around, we would get the timeless classic 40s Superman animated series dubbed Fleischer Superman. The series kept much of Superman's overall look, changing minor things, like making his belt red with a yellow buckle and changing the inside of Superman's crest from yellow to black, which I very much dig and would make its way into comic books years later. This is one of the most loved and iconic looks for Superman, with the series inspiring Batman the Animated Series. Okay, the next evolution of Superman's suit came with the 1950s Adventures of Superman live action series. This iconic show gave us our very first official live-action Superman suit, which is as traditional of a look for Superman as you're gonna get. It's literally ripped right from the comics. Is it extremely dated and not that well done? Of course, it was the 50s, which adds to the charm and classic nature of the suit. Anyway, jumping forward in time a number of years, and we would get arguably the most iconic live-action Superman, and that is Christopher Reeve's Superman. Like George Reeve's Superman, this suit was ripped right out of the comics. Is it literally just an all-cloth suit with red boots? Yes, but it's a staple in Superman's history. I mean, it's Christopher Reeve's Superman. Without him, we wouldn't have gotten Superman's definitive John Williams theme. But something that should be noted is that Reeve's Superman introduced a huge S-shield on his chest. Before this, it was portrayed way smaller. This would actually inspire the comic book Superman suit. Superman's costume would more or less stay the same until the mid-80s. But when artist and writer John Byrne took over Superman's writing and drawing duties for Volume 2 of Superman's subtitled series, we got some more changes starting in 1987. The biggest change Byrne made for Superman's suit is making Superman's S crest massive on his chest, much like Reeves Superman. This is the version of Superman I and many of you grew up with, and Byrne implemented this change in the late 80s, but it carried over all the way to Dan Jurgen's iconic Superman run, with the big S shield lasting pretty much all of the 90s. Superman was also sporting that massive S shield in Superman 75, The Death of Superman. This would also lead directly into a massive change for Superman's suit. You see, when he came back to life, he wore an entirely new black and silver suit that was capeless. It's actually known as the Recovery, or Soul suit. When he was brought back to life at the Fortress of Solitude, he was placed in this suit to help him recover faster as he was just brought back to life. The suit is able to do this by absorbing sunlight at an accelerated rate. So it doesn't just look cool, it has a purpose. We did a whole episode on it, which you could find right here. Anyway, Superman would return to his classic late 80s and 90s red and blue suit in issue 82 of Superman, still sporting that mullet he grew out during the reign of Superman. Because you know, 
business in the front, Artie in the back. Now after this, the next major suit we would get is the Adventures of Lois and Clark suit, and I loved this show as a kid. Anyway, this Superman was played by Dean Cain and gave us something similar to Reeves' suit, but with a much darker blue bodysuit, longer cape, and even bigger S-shield to match with what Jurgens was doing in the comics at the time. From here is arguably my favorite suit or style for Superman, as I'm a sucker for anything DCAU, and that would be Superman's suit and overall look from Superman the Animated Series, which premiered in 1996. I still remember watching the premiere for this series at night prime time before it hit its normal schedule every day after school and of course Saturday mornings. This is Superman in the amazing Bruce Tim art style who co-created Batman the Animated Series and designed all the characters. Well Batman the Animated Series was so successful Bruce Tim and company did the same thing for Superman giving us Superman the Animated Series creating one of the best looks and overall versions of Superman. It's just a staple for 90s kids and one of the best things made for Superman outside of comics. Maybe the best but then going back to the comics in 1997 we got what would be dubbed Superman Blue as Superman got a whole new look and costume. During this time in comics, Superman was newly married to Lois Lane, but something strange was happening to his powers. The Man of Steel was somehow being turned into a being of pure energy and developing new unique powers because of this. Now when I say new powers, I'm saying electrical powers. So forget being faster than a speeding bullet, he was faster than lightning. But because he was turning into a being of pure energy, he needed a new suit to contain it. So he had a doctor and professor friend make him a containment suit that just so happened to be blue, matching his new blue energy self. Thus giving us Blue Suit Superman, or Superman Blue as he's referred to. Now there's also Superman Red. Superman Red is actually an alternate version of Superman. He was created when using a mind enhancing machine that was powered by kryptonite to make him more intelligent, but instead it gave us Superman Red. Next up is another one of my favorite looks or redesigns for Superman, just modifying his classic look, and that is Justice League and Justice League Unlimited animated series, which kicked off in 2001. Again, it's in Bruce Timm's art style, and it's just a modified version version of the Superman animated series look. I absolutely love it. As far as super suits goes, it's the classic red and blue Superman suit, but I had to mention it just because this version of Superman is a staple for many of us. Then we have the Libermejo Superman suit. This costume, yet again, is a classic Superman look. But Bermejo's art is so specific, the texturing and art style makes it feel like a different suit. With the textures lay over Superman, the wrinkles and structure of his cape, and the raised crest symbol on his chest, all made for one of the best Superman suits ever, even though, again, it's basically just his classic normal suit. Then of course we have one of the most beloved looks for Superman from one of the most beloved Superman stories of all time and that is Frank Quietly's Superman suit from All-Star Superman. This just screams classic all over it yet again it's just the standard Superman suit with minor changes. The way the cape draped over his shoulders, the huge Superman crest on his chest, but more distinct to this version of Superman his trunks coming down longer on the legs being not so much like tidy whities but more like boxer shorts. Next we have the 2006 Superman Returns Brandon Routh Superman suit. This is probably my least favorite live action Superman look. There's three things I don't like about the suit that they changed. First, and foremost, the fact that the red on the suit is maroon. Superman should have a bright standard red, not this very dark maroon red. And second, I don't like how high the collar is on his neck. I feel like it just looks a little weird and awkward. And lastly, they made the Superman crest or logo on his chest very tiny. I mean, overall, the movie is not considered great by any means, and unfortunately, the suit isn't either. Next up, let's go back to comic books, and in 2011, we got Superman's new 52 suit. This is when DC decided to reboot all of their continuity, and with that giving us modernized looks for all of their characters, redesigns given to us by Jim Lee. Superman's look stayed the same while also changing drastically. He still kept the blue suit, classic Superman logo, and red cape. But the blue bodysuit was now made to be almost like armored plating. Red piping was added around his wrist, which now came to a point over the top of his hand, and he was given a collar of sorts that went up the sides of his neck. His belt was also made red instead of yellow, and by far the biggest change was the ditching of the trunks on the outside of the suit. I really dig the suit, still to this day. I think it's a perfect modern update for the character. With that said, of course, I'm a purist loving the OG one with the red trunks on the outside, but again, I don't mind this modern take. It makes sense. After DC's New 52, we would get DC Rebirth in 2016, which was yet another reboot of sorts for DC for Superman's classic suit, which was updated yet again. His suit reverts back to the classic bodysuit, no longer having that armored plating look. They kept the red belt from the New 52 suit, just changed it a little bit, and the red trunks were still gone. And most notably, they made his boots blue. But this brings us back to live action with CW Superman, who first 
first appeared in CW Supergirl. His first suit for Supergirl kept all the classic elements of Superman with little changes, just like every rendition of the suit. The blue body suit was darker blue, and the way the cape sat on the shoulders was changed. The straps for the cape literally came out of the top of his crest, and of course, no trunks. However, once this version of Superman was given his own series, Superman and Lois, his suit was of course upgraded, being more muscular, the belt design changed, and his cape sitting more classic around the collar. I think this version is way better. My only gripe I have with this is how tight it is around the collar. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of like those choking collars around the neck. This brings us to Henry Cavill Superman, who has easily the best live action Superman suit. His suit more or less stayed the same since his introduction in The Man of Steel with minor changes throughout the DCEU. This Superman suit is pretty much perfection, especially for live action. This Superman suit still has no trunks, but everything else is pretty much OG classic Superman. Just a modern rendition, giving us an awesome textured bodysuit with Kryptonian patterns. Then more currently, you have the My Adventures of Superman suit, which is a really good series. If you haven't checked it out, it's fun. This is more or less an American anime version take on Superman. And lastly, finishing with comics, Superman is back to his classic look as seen in action comics, Dawn of DC. But there you have it, the evolution of Superman's suit over the years from his inception to current. As mentioned, we didn't touch on every single suit Superman has had, but we tried to hit all of the main continuity suit changes Superman has had over the years in the major cartoons, movies, and comics. If we went Elseworlds, that would have been a much longer list. So maybe we can do that in another episode. With that said, let us know what your favorite version of Superman suit is down in the comments. Other than that, we'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.